then limiting glucose and limiting insulin is important in the development of colorectal and breast cancer. This obesity issue now seems to be replacing smoking as a risk factor uh, for cancer. And, and, and you're right, there's an insulin issue, uh, there's a glucose issue, and um, uh, the, the, the systemic inflammation in many people that are obese, and let's not let's not include every every obese person on the planet in the same basket. We, we know there are some obese people that are actually very very healthy. They have unbelievably healthy blood work and all this kind of stuff. But that doesn't is that's the exception rather than the norm. Um, and if your insulin is high and your blood sugar is high, and you have uh, a tumor, uh, it will generally cause that to grow faster. And I think that's uh, pretty much obvious to those of us who understand this issue, but apparently not obvious to a majority, or I don't want to say majority, but to many oncologists who have never heard that that glucose has anything to do uh, with cancer and often encourage their patients to drink Infamil or sweet things to maintain weight, um, uh, which is just the opposite uh, advice that you would want to give someone. I think what has happened is because of the advances in the genetic, you know, technologies and the treatment, you get this idea that it's 90% genes and 10%, but it's not. It's like, you know, 80% environmental. A lot has to do with your diet and and, and weight. And, And we know this because the World Health Organization has like 13 different cancers that are obesity associated uh, one of them, for example, is colorectal. And now you see this shift. Younger people are getting colorectal cancers and bad ones too. Well, why? Well, not so hard to understand. If obesity is a related factor, then there's more obesity. So therefore, you're getting more. You're getting more obesity younger, right? Kids are getting obese in their teens now. So therefore, you're getting more. Just like you have more type 2 diabetes uh, in young people now. Same thing, right? Pediatric clinics used to be 90% uh, type 1 and 10% type 2. Now it's like a 50-50 type 1 and type 2, right? You get like 15-year-olds with type 2 diabetes. So so this whole thing is, it, it does require this whole shift in thinking that, hey, this is not just a genetic disease. That's not to say that genes have nothing to do with it because, and, and it's not to, it's not to say that these targeted therapies aren't good because they are good. Obviously, they spend a lot of money on it. But you have to, when you're thinking about how these things develop, you have to think about what is important. So one of the things, obviously, is glucose and insulin. So it's like, okay, well, if that's important, then limiting glucose and limiting insulin is important in the development of colorectal and breast cancer, which, which, which for some reason just gets lost in this whole, it's all about genes, it's all about genes, it's all about genes.